everyone, it's Sarah, and welcome to my crochet channel. Now today's video is our washcloth of the month, and it's April, so that's our fourth washcloth. And our washcloth that we're going to be doing together is called the Wagon Wheel Washcloth. And the reason we call it a wagon wheel is because it's round, but you can also see that we've made front post stitches to look like the spokes of a wagon wheel. Those little front post stitches give you a little bit of extra scrubber when you're using your washcloth. You'll also notice that I have two styles. They're basically stitched exactly the same. The only difference is I changed colors and made it look a little bit like a flower and used only cotton yarn. On these two, I used the sugar and cream scrub off and it turned out different because I didn't change colors. I just went with what the yarn had and you can see there is some scrubby yarn in there and some cotton and it works perfect for this as well. So that gives you a couple of options and we'll talk more about that a little farther on in the video. Now, this is a free crochet pattern and as always, you can find this pattern down in the notes underneath this video. All right, let's talk yarn a little more in depth. This one is made just using cotton yarns. I chose to do the first three rows in yellow, then I did the rest of the rows in cream and then trimmed it with green. I wanted it to kind of resemble a daisy, but to be honest with you, I think it looks like a fried egg. <laughs> Either way, I love it. This one is made using the scrub off yarn like I mentioned earlier. The yarn itself is put together with some solids and some variegated and also has solid and variegated scrubby yarn. And that scrubby yarn, you can see it has some texture. And it's all wound together in one yarn. You can make two of these scrubbies out of one of these small cakes or balls of sugar and cream yarn. To make the regular cotton one, you can see I'm going to be using this lavender. I'm going to put that where the cream is here. I'm going to start with this yellow. It's kind of a yellowy green, a little bit brighter for the center. And then I'm going to finish off with this light green for the trim. <laughs> Maybe it'll look more like a flower and less like an egg. <laughs> We're going to be stitching today with our eye hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle for weaving in ends and a pair of scissors. Now, this is a perfect pattern for using up some of your leftover cotton yarn scraps. So if you want to do that, that will work great too. I forgot to mention that the circle across of our washcloth measures about nine inches. And like I said, I'm going to be making one that resembles this. I'm going to start with that yellow in the middle. I'm going to make the cream part purple and the edge that bright green. All right, I'm going to make my slip knot and I'm going to chain five. I'm going to make this chain five into a circle. So we'll put the tail of yarn over our hook and pull that through that loop. And then we'll just snug that down so that doesn't come undone. And then we'll make our little stay knot. Again, we don't want that to come undone. We'll put our hook in, pull up a loop, and chain three. This chain three counts as our first double crochet. And we're going to make nine more so we have a total of ten double crochets. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through the first two. Yarn over and go through those last two. All right, so we have our chain three and we have our double crochet. So let's make eight more. We'll 
whoops. <laughs> We need one more for 10 double crochets. We're going to gently pull on that string and we'll deal with that in just a second. We're going to join to our chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. All right, now, before we go any farther, we're gonna turn this over and we're going to gently pull on that string and we're gonna go ahead and close that up. And if you've watched very many of my videos where I'm doing a circle, I usually do this technique. I want to make sure there is not a hole in the center of my washcloth. And I have to weave it in anyway, so I might as well go ahead and take care of it. All right, nice and snug. We'll clip off that string. And now for row one, we have 10 double crochets. We joined with a slip stitch to our chain three and chained three. Now on row two, we're going to begin doing our front post double crochet stitches. Our chain three counts is our first double crochet. We're going to front post around this chain three. So yarn over, we're going to go around the post of the stitch and stitch our double crochet. Then we're going to go in the next double crochet and stitch a double crochet. Now we're going to go around that stitch, that post, and stitch a double crochet around the front post. And it's called the front post because it's the post or the stand-up portion of the stitch. Normally we stitch our stitches in the top. And what we're doing for row two is we're alternating. We're stitching a double crochet in the top of that double crochet. And then we're stitching around the front post of that same stitch. So double crochet in the next double crochet, and then front post double crochet in that same, I should say around that same double crochet stitch. And you'll notice that you'll have your regular double crochet and then your front post alternating every other one. So double crochet in the top, which is where we usually stitch our double crochet, and then double crochet front post or double crochet around the front post of that next stitch. This first row is a little bit more difficult than as we keep going, but once you've got this done, this second row here, you'll think, oh, that was a lot easier than I thought. So I double crocheted in the top of that stitch, and now I'm front post double crocheting around the front post. And again, it's the same stitch. You're still doing a double crochet. We're just placing it in a different place. Double crochet in the double crochet, and front post double crochet around that same stitch. Double crochet, front post, double crochet. And then we'll join to the top of that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. And you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten front post double crochet stitches and ten double crochet stitches in between those front post stitches. So that's going to give you a total of 20 stitches. Join to the chain three and chain three. 
row three, our chain three counts is our first double crochet, and we're going to stitch another double crochet right in that same stitch as our chain three, and then we'll stitch around our front post double crochet for another front post double crochet. And so the way row three works, let me roll out here some more yarn, is we're going to stitch two double crochets in the top of that regular double crochet that we stitched. And then we'll stitch a front post around the front post. Two double crochets in the double crochet. And then front post double crochet around the front post double crochet. And you should be able to start seeing those wagon wheel spokes popping right out so that we have a little bit of scrubbiness to our washcloth. Two double crochets in the double crochet and then front post in the front post double crochet. Two double crochets, then a front post around the front post double crochet. And we'll complete this all the way around and join back to our chain three. I've completed row three and you're going to have two double crochets in between your front posts. You're going to have a total of 30 stitches. You'll have 20 double crochets and 10 front post stitches. I joined to the top of my chain three, but I went ahead and cut my yarn. I'm going to be changing colors, and that's why I haven't chained three yet. Something to keep in mind is that you want to do your color change and then your chain three, because if you went ahead and completed your chain three, you would have one stitch that is the wrong color. Now, this is only if you're changing colors. If you're doing it say from the scrubby yarn or from a solid yarn that you're not going to be changing colors, then you can go ahead and do your chain three. All right, so our chain three counts is our first double crochet, and we're going to place two double crochets in that second double crochet. And then we're going to double crochet front post around the front post stitch. And this is our repeat for row four. One double crochet in the first double crochet and two double crochets in the second double crochet of those two. So there'll be three in there. And then we'll double crochet front post around the front post stitch. And we'll repeat this all the way around. One double crochet in that first double crochet of those two, and then two double crochets in the second, and then front post double crochet around the front post double crochet. And so we're continuing our front post double crochets in the same spot. So you'll have three double crochets and a front post for each one. So one double crochet in the first double crochet of the two and two double crochets in the second and front post double crochet around the front post double crochet. And we'll repeat this working all the way around and join back to our chain three. I've completed row four. We have three double crochets and a front post double crochet. And so we're going to have a total of 40 stitches around. You'll have 30 double crochets and again, 10 front post double crochets. All right, now we're going to be adding some extra front post double crochets on row five. So what we're going to do is we're going to double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. 
Then this center double crochet of those three that are together, we're going to stitch a front post double crochet. So we'll go around the post of that stitch. And then in that last double crochet of those three, we'll stitch two double crochets. And that brings us to our next front post double crochet, which we will stitch a front post double crochet. All right, let's keep going. This brings us to our next set of three double crochets and front post. So we're going to stitch two double crochets in that first of those three. One, two. Then we'll stitch front post double crochet the next double crochet, and that brings us to our third double crochet of those three, and we'll stitch two double crochets, and then we'll stitch a front post around the front post double crochet. And so what we're doing is we're adding an extra front post in between. So you'll have two double crochets, front post, 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 working all the way around for row five. All right, so two double crochets in this next double crochet. Front post double crochet. And then two double crochets in that next double crochet. And that brings us to our front post double crochet. Two double crochets in the next double crochet. Front post double crochet. And two double crochets in the third double crochet of that set of three. And then front post double crochet around the front post double crochet. And I think you've got it figured out now. We'll complete this all the way around and join back to our chain three. I've completed row five and now you're going to have 20 front post double crochet stitches and 40 double crochet stitches. So you'll have a total of 60 stitches. Join to the top of my chain three and chained three. Now, one thing you may notice about this row is it may seem a little bit crowded or ripply. Don't worry, this next row, row six, is going to help it lay out flat because basically we're going to just place a double crochet in a double crochet, front post in a front post. We won't be adding any extra stitches. We're just going to do it exactly the way it's done. All right, so our chain three counts is our first double crochet. So we're going to double crochet in the next double crochet. Then we'll front post in the next front post. One double crochet in each of those two double crochets. One and two. And front post in the front post stitch. And of course, it's a double crochet front post. All right, so like I said, double crochet in the double crochets, front post double crochet in the front post double crochets. So one, two double crochets and front post double crochet in that next double crochet stitch. two double crochets, front post, double crochet. One and two double crochets, one in each of those two, and front post, double crochet. And we'll repeat this, working all the way around. And again, we're joined back to our chain three. Two double crochets, front post, repeat all the way around.
I completed row six and you're again going to have 40 double crochets and 20 front post double crochets for 60 stitches. And you'll notice that your washcloth is laying nice and flat now. All right, now for row seven, we're going to stitch a second double crochet in our second double crochet of each set. So our chain three counts is our first, and remember we joined our chain three with a slip stitch and chained three. So we'll stitch two double crochets in that second double crochet, and then front post double crochet in the front post double crochet. One double crochet in the first double crochet, and two double crochets in the next. One and two. And then we'll front post double crochet around the front post double crochet. And that's our repeat for row seven. One double crochet in the first double crochet of those two, and two double crochets in the next. One and two. And then front post double crochet around the front post double crochet. And that's the way that our repeat for row seven will work. And this is our last double crochet repeat row. After this row, we're going to add the trim. So just to repeat what we're doing on row seven is one double crochet in the next double crochet, two double crochets in the next, one and two, and then front post double crochet around the next front post double crochet, and we will repeat this again all the way around and join back to our chain three. But don't chain three because our last row is a single crochet row. So I've completed row seven. We have three double crochets in between each of our front posts. So we have a total of 80 stitches. We have 20 front posts and 60 double crochets. All right, now I join to the top of my chain three and if you're not changing colors, we're just going to chain one, but I'm going to change colors to my bright green. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the purple or the lavender there. And there we go, find the end of my green here. And I'm going to bring in my green. This is just a bright green I wanted to use to make this look like a spring zinnia or flower. And this last row, we're just going to stitch one single crochet in each of the single crochets around. So we'll go right in that first stitch, which is the top of that chain three. There we go. Let's snug that down a little bit better. And stitch single crochet. All right, so we'll go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and stitch single crochets one single crochet in each of the stitches working all the way around the edge of our washcloth. Now, if you want this to be used as a pot holder, because it's nine inches, it's not great big, you can make two of these and put them together, front and back facing out, front, the front sides facing out, and you can put them together and then single crochet the edges together so that it's nice and thick and it will make a nice pot holder or hot pad. Just keep in mind, if you're using acrylic yarn, acrylic yarn will burn if it gets hot. But I thought this was a great idea to also use as a hot pad or pot holder since it's just a nine inch washcloth instead of some of our great big ones that we've made. All right, so I'm going to continue around stitching one single crochet in each of the stitches around and then I'll join back to my first single crochet and then I'll also show you how to add a little loop so you can hang it up to dry or maybe just hang it up for decoration. I've completed that single crochet edge on my washcloth. 
I'm going to join to my first single crochet. And if you want to just tie off right here, you can. But I'm going to show you if you just chain 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, then slip stitch right back in that same stitch. You can make a little loop that you can hang up your washcloth to dry. And I like to hang it up on the faucet, like once I've used them, um, I'll rinse it out, get the soap and dirt out of it, hang it up on the faucet, and then it can dry. Um, especially if I'm just cleaning out the sink. All right, I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to go into the next stitch and pull that loop to the back so we have a nice clean finish. And then, of course, I've got some weaving in to do because I changed colors three times. But if you didn't, all you have left to do is to weave in the top. Because if you did this all in one color, like this one, which is all one type of yarn, all you have left to do is to weave in that last end. All right, so I have a little bit of weaving in to do here. And I want to give you a little tip about trying to get the cotton on your needle. If you open up the end a little bit where you've cut it and flatten it out, fold it over your needle, it makes it a lot easier to get it in there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just weave this in. And when you changed colors, if you did, of course, it's um, a good idea to try to do that weaving in and stay in that color that you were using. If I go down into this lavender, some of that might show through on the front, and we don't want that. We want to keep it nice and neat. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and weave these in and tidy up my washcloth. So here is my washcloth all completed. I think it does kind of look like a flower. It's very cute. And remember, you don't have to change colors. You can make it all one color and use a variegated if you want to. You can make it with a loop or without a loop. And you can also take two of these and put them together, stitch the edge together, and make a nice thick hot pad. So there's lots of possibilities with this month's washcloth, the Wagon Wheel Washcloth of the Month for April.